Imagine you're baking a cake. Let's say while you're baking, your little brother keeps opening the oven to peek at the cake. Ah! Every time he does that, he lets some heat out and that is the disturbance variable. Something you didn't plan for and something that's very hard to control. Let me tell you in this video the difference between disturbance variables and experimental variables and how you find them in order to plan the best experiments possible. Consider the process of creating an organic coating. The type of resin that's used, the curing temperature, as well as the curing time, these are all experimental variables that you can change to change the characteristics of your final coating, such as hardness, gloss, or resistance to chemicals. But what about disturbance variables in our coatings experiment? Well, these could be things like humidity or slight variations in the composition of the resin that is used. For example, different batches. These are factors that we don't change on purpose, but they still might affect our results. Disturbance variables can be sneaky. They can make us think experimental variables are having an effect when they're not or hide an effect that's really there. Sometimes you can control disturbance variables if you know about them. For example, you can make sure the resin that you're using is not from different batches. But sometimes it's a little bit more difficult, like with the humidity or temperature. If you're lucky enough to have air conditioning in your lab, well, that's great. But if you're not, there's not much you can do about that. And sometimes you're not even aware that there are disturbance variables that have an impact on your experimental results. That's why we use techniques like replication, randomization and blocking. I already did a video about that. I link it in the description if you're interested. Now the questions of all questions. How do we make sure to think of as many experimental as well as disturbance variables as possible? Well, the good news is there are a couple of methodologies that help us with that. Let's consider our previous example of creating an organic coating. We want to identify all the possible variables that might affect the quality of our paint. In the first step, we can do a brainstorming. I think the most important thing during a brainstorming is to separate the idea generation from the idea evaluation. First step, only shoot ideas out. When you wrote everything down, everything you could think of, you're starting evaluating these different variables and maybe rank them from highest impact to lowest impact. If you want to have a more structured approach, you can use fishbone diagrams, also known as Ishikawa diagrams. We draw a fishbone diagram, coating quality, and then branch off into categories like materials, process, environment, and then have brainstorming sessions for each individual category. By asking why repeatedly, we can often identify variables that come not to your mind immediately. For example, why might the quality of my paint vary? Because the curing temperature varies. Why does the curing temperature vary? Till we identified several underlying variables that are relevant for our experiment. Finally, you can use experimental design techniques like screening designs to screen your variables and test how strong their impact on the coating quality actually is. <laughs>